In this video, I want to talk about defilement in scripture, what God has established and how that applies to us today. One of the things I, um, one of the reasons why this came up is because my daughter and her husband and their child came back from a trip recently and my daughter's husband came back sick. And we talked about this as a family. We had a visit that was planned after they came back. And he is sick every single time he comes back from that trip, the same place. And my daughter called me when they came back and she told me that he was sick and asked me if I wanted them to come out. And uh, and then she said, well, no, just me and, and Remy are going to come out, the baby. And so I thought initially, okay, that that's the better thing to do according to the word. When you're sick, you need to isolate. But then I started to feel bad. I started to feel bad because he has this particular time off. And I thought, well, I don't want him to be separated from his family. And I wanted to spend time with him also. And I had made all of this food in preparation for them to come and had made different preparations. And we were excited about being able to take some ext extended time together, which we don't usually have all together as a family. But I decided to do things based on my own understanding. I decided to do them not according to what God has established in the word. So someone was asking me earlier, uh, you know, I corrected this with the assembly and let them know, I'm convinced that when someone is sick, you must not spend time with them. They must go into isolation. When the symptoms, uh, when, when a person has symptoms that are severe, they need to go into isolation. Contagion is established in the word. It's just not established according to the way that medicine establishes contagion with regard to germs and everything else. Germs may be a factor. I don't, I don't know to what extent germs are a factor. And so I still clean things and I still make sure that, you know, the baby is not affected by things like that. But the bottom line is that's not going to keep you from getting sick. And so it doesn't really make sense for me to be more focused on that than obedience to the word, which says that person needs to go into isolation and we need not be around people who are quote unquote dead or sick, spiritually dead, spiritually sick. And sickness, physical sickness is the manifestation of spiritual sickness. I don't care what anybody has to say about that. If you think that I'm relying on my own understanding, it's because you don't read the word. Because I was told that today, that I was relying on my own understanding by someone who does not know the word and admittedly does not know if they believe in the word. The word is clear on this point, even to the point where people, when they had been around a dead body, God doesn't have the heebie-jeebies over a dead body, but was establishing something in the physical to help you understand the spiritual. If you had been around a dead body, you needed to go and participate in purification, right? In purification, um, rituals such as sacrificing a red heifer in order to be made clean. Does that make you clean? No, these things were done as an example to us. Now, what did I go do? I made a decision based on my own understanding and my own desires, and I defiled myself. Am I going to get sick? Do you think that I'm not going to get sick because I cleaned all the light switches and the doorknobs with rubbing alcohol? No, what I'm doing is stupid by doing that. I still end up taking these precautions and I still did that, you know, like I still cleaned all the doorknobs with rubbing alcohol and the light switches and everything else. No, I'm not protecting myself from getting sick, guys. I can feel a drip in my throat right now. I know exactly what I did. I made a decision of my own understanding. I defiled myself by making a conscious decision to choose what was comfortable for me rather than what the word says. Now, let me tell you what I've also observed. I've observed this in my own life. I've observed it in the lives of people who I work with, and I've observed it in my family's life. When you start rending your heart to God, you start to get better. And then when you start rending your heart back to the world and the flesh and the things that the flesh wants, you get sick again. And the people around you and those who depend on you end up also getting sick. The apostles asked Jesus, was this man born blind or did this man sin that he was born blind or did his parents sin that he was born blind? 
There was an understanding in the word that your sin and the sins of your parents affects you. Certain people don't want to admit that. And then they accuse others of leaning on their own understanding when they're speaking directly from the word. And you know why? Because they don't believe in the word. And they would rather condemn those who speak truth than to take responsibility for themselves. Leviticus 13. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, when anyone has a swelling or a rash or a shiny spot on their skin, that that may be a defiling skin disease, they must be brought to Aaron the priest or to one of his sons who is a priest. Okay, one thing that's really important for you to understand is that there has been no leprosy, there's been no disease, there's been no illness until God brought that illness on the Egyptians. Prior to that, there was nothing. God is now raising his firstborn, Israel, the Israelites. He's raising them to himself and teaching them his ways, his laws, his decrees, what they must do. And so in Exodus 15, 26, he says, if you obey me and you follow the things that I've established, I will not put on you any of the diseases that I put on those Egyptians. I am the Lord who heals you. Now what he's doing in Leviticus 13 is he's explaining how he's going to show them what they have done in their hearts, how he's going to show them when they have defiled themselves. Just as Jesus said, nothing that goes into the body defiles you, but it's what comes out of the body, excuse me, out of the mouth, because it's coming from your heart. What you speak, guys, is coming from your heart. That is what's going on in your heart. The other day I said to the assembly, that I had my son-in-law come over, you know, while he was sick. And I said, it's complicated. That was coming from my heart. It was complicated for me when it should have been very, very clear. There should have been nothing that was complicated. It should have been absolutely clear based on God's word. If you are sick, go be dealt with, with God, go return to God. Why did I do that? Because I did it for my own comfort and I was wrong. And now I've defiled myself. What God is showing you right here in Leviticus 13 is that he is going to demonstrate what's going on when he starts sending you affliction. So pay attention from that perspective. He's not giving you a diagnostic manual. He is explaining to you what the physical manifestations look like of defilement And he's giving you the first thing that he established, the first thing that he was dealing with his children, the way that he was dealing with them, which was, uh, you know, skin issues. So now he's going to tell you whether something is just a rash or it's become a defiling skin disease. And he's going to let you know that if you are not healing, once you've gone into isolation, you have to be cast out of the camp. Well, why would he do that? That's mean, right? According to the world's understanding, medical diagnoses aren't your fault, right? Well, according to God, you have physical manifestations of, in, of spiritual heart defilement. So actually, it is your fault, except in the case of children where children are bearing the sins of their parents. In that case, the child is a victim of their parent, of the parent's wicked heart. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, when anyone has a swelling or a rash or a shiny spot on their skin that may be a defiling skin disease, they must be brought to Aaron the priest or to one of his sons who is a priest. The priest is to examine the sore on the skin, and if the hair in that sore has turned white and the sore appears to be more than skin deep, it is a defiling skin disease. Okay, he's saying if the symptoms are severe, if it's more than skin deep, if it's deep, if the hair has turned white, This is a defiling skin disease. When the priest examines that person, he shall pronounce them ceremonially unclean. Why does God spend all this time? Because I remember when I first started reading the Old Testament, and and particularly Leviticus, and he's, okay, well, if you do this, then you're unclean till morning. And you're unclean, you know, then you need to do this. And then you need to do, why is he establishing all of this clean from unclean? Because he wants you to know what's going on in the unseen realm, inside of your heart, and that he has given you a way, some ways to know when you start getting too far from him, when you are spurning him, when you need to isolate in him. 
People who don't know the word have a fine way of trying to justify and rationalize this stuff away and accuse others of, well, how do you know that? Well, I know it because of this, this, and this in scripture. That's how I know. How do you know anything? What, what's you, how do you understand it? That's what I thought. The very people who do this don't even take the time to really understand the word, nor do they believe in the word, nor have they asked God, is your word true or not? And really pursued the answer to that question. But they have a fine way of accusing everybody else who actually is speaking on truth of relying on their own understanding. This is what the word says, guys. If you think that what I'm saying is not true, show me in scripture then. Show me based on scripture that I have misunderstood. Because I'm showing you based on scripture that I have understood, that I have sat in the counsel of God, and that I don't ask him questions and then not pursue him for the answers. If the shiny spot on the skin is white, but does not appear to be more than skin deep and the hair in it has not turned white, the priest is to isolate the affected person for seven days. On the seventh day, the priest is to examine them, and if he sees that the sore is unchanged and has not spread In the skin, he is to isolate them for another seven days. Okay, so seven days. What's isolation? Has God established anything about isolation? Uh, yeah. During Passover, close your doors, hide yourselves for a little while until his wrath has passed by. And during Passover, he said, go into your houses and rid your house of yeast. Yeast in the word is sin. So when you go into isolation, guys, that's what you should be doing. You should be returning to God and examining yourself with him. Why is it that he sent this to you? How did you get far from him? What is he dealing with you on? What needs to change in your life? Not just a checklist of, well, I did this and I did that and I'm sorry. Boom, can I be healed? No, you actually examine yourself and you return to God and you commune with him. So if there was some sort of change or the whatever this is on your skin, is unchanged and it has not spread. And what I mean by when I say change, that there's a change for the better, not a change for the worse, or the sore is unchanged and has not spread in the skin, then you go into isolation for another seven days. Does this mean that you don't take care of your responsibilities? No, it doesn't mean that. It means you should be in a Everything inside of you, whether you have to go to work or whatever it is that you have to do during that time, you do not participate in the world. You isolate yourself and insulate yourself in God. In these days, you would have been completely isolated. For me, particularly, I am completely isolated, but I also am not having to go to work. This is my work. So I would not be going to the store. I would not be doing anything. I would go through my cupboards, make myself a pot of soup. That's what I would eat for the seven days, and that's it. It doesn't matter if I don't have my favorite foods or my favorite things in the house. This is what would be my sole focus. And now, since I defiled myself, that's what I get to do for the next seven days. On the seventh day, the priest is to examine them again. And if the sore has faded and has not spread in the skin, the priest shall pronounce them clean. It is only a rash. So God's making a distinction between defiling skin disease and a rash. I have made the distinction with you between affliction. A rash is still an affliction, hello, in which God is calling you in versus a sickness or an illness in which God is dealing with you because you have defiled yourself. But if the rash does not spread in their skin after they've shown themselves to the priest to be pronounced clean... They must appear before the priest again. The priest is to examine that person, and if the rash is spread in the skin, he shall pronounce them unclean. It is a defiling skin disease. When anyone has a a defiling skin disease, they must be brought to the priest. The priest is to examine them, and if there is a white swelling in the skin that has turned the hair white, and if there is raw flesh in the swelling, it is a chronic skin disease, and that priest shall pronounce them unclean. He is not to isolate them because they are already unclean. Oh, well, what is he going to do? If the disease breaks out all over their skin and so far as the priest can see, it covers all the skin of the affected person from head to foot. The priest is to examine them. And if the disease has covered their whole body, he shall pronounce them clean. Okay, so this person is covered head to toe, but they're being pronounced clean. And the next sentence is, since it is all turned white, they are clean. 
but whenever raw flesh appears on them, they will be unclean. When the priest sees the raw flesh, he shall pronounce them unclean. The raw flesh is unclean. They have a defiling skin disease. If the raw flesh changes and turns white, they must go to the priest. The priest is to examine them. And if the sores have turned white, the priest shall pronounce the, un- the affected person clean. They will be clean. When someone has a boil on their skin and it heals, and in the place where the boil was, a white swelling or reddish white spot appears, they must present themselves to the priest. The priest is to examine it, and if it appears to be more than skin deep and the hair in it has turned white, the priest shall pronounce that person unclean. It is a defiling skin disease that is broken out where the boil was. But if, when the priest examines it, there is no white hair in it, and it is not more than skin deep and is faded, then the priest is to isolate them for seven days. If it is spreading in the skin, the priest shall pronounce them unclean. It is a defiling disease. But if the, sc- the spot is unchanged and has not spread, it is only a scar from the boil, and the priest shall pronounce them clean. When someone has a burn on their skin and a reddish white or a white spot appears in the raw flesh of the burn, the priest is to examine the spot. If the hair in it has turned white, and it appears to be more than skin deep. It is a defiling disease that is broken out in the burn. The priest shall pronounce them unclean. It is a defiling skin disease. Okay. We're still getting to the point of understanding what happens to the clean person and the unclean person. And we have already read that the unclean person doesn't go into isolation. The unclean person is going to be cast out of the camp. That's what the word is going to say. So if you're getting sick or if your afflictions are getting more serious and you don't deal with that, what God is telling you is that you are at risk of being cast out of the camp. If you don't look at these things as his call for you to return to him and you spurn him and you're foolish and you think to yourself, well, this is just a cold as the world says it's a cold. You're at risk of being cast out of the camp. That's what he's telling you. When someone has a burn on their skin and a reddish white or white spot appears in the raw flesh of that burn, the priest is to examine the spot. And if the hair in it has turned white and appears to be more than skin deep, it is a defiling skin disease that is broken out in the burn. The priest shall pronounce them unclean. It is a defiling skin disease. But if the priest examines it, there's no white hair in the spot. If it's more than skin, not more than skin deep and is faded, then the priest is to isolate them for seven days. On the seventh day, the priest is to examine that person And if it is spreading in the skin, the priest shall pronounce them unclean. It's a defiling skin disease. If, however, the spot is unchanged and has not spread in the skin, but has faded, it is a swelling from the burn and the priest shall not pronounce them, excuse me, shall pronounce them clean. It is only a scar from the burn. If a man or woman has a sore on their head or chin, the priest is to examine the sore if it appears to be more than skin deep and the hair in it is yellow and thin, the priest shall pronounce them unclean. It is a defiling skin disease on the head or chin. But if when the priest examines the sore, it does not seem to be more than skin deep and there is no black hair in it, then the priest is to isolate the affected person for seven days. On the seventh day, the priest is to examine the sore and if it is not spread and there is no yellow hair in it and it does not appear to be more than skin deep, then the man or woman must shave themselves except for the affected area and the priest is to keep them isolated another seven days. On the seventh day, the priest is to examine the sore, and if it has not spread in the skin and appears to be no more than skin deep, the priest shall pronounce them clean. They must wash their clothes and they will be clean. But if the sore does spread in the skin, after they are pronounced clean, the priest is to examine them, and if he finds that the sore is spread in the skin, he does not need to look for yellow hair, they are unclean. If, however, the sore is unchanged so far as the priest can see, and if black hair has grown in it, the affected person is healed. They are clean, and the priest shall pronounce them clean. When a man or woman has white spots on the skin, the priest is to examine them, and if the spots are dull white, it is a harmless rash that is broken out on the skin, they are clean. A man who has lost his hair and is bald is clean. If he has lost his hair from the front of his scalp and has a bald forehead, he is clean. But if he has a reddish white sore on his bald head or forehead, it is a defiling skin disease breaking out on his head or forehead. The priest is to examine him, and if the swollen sore on his head or forehead is reddish white, like a defiling skin disease, the man is diseased and is unclean. The priest shall pronounce him unclean because of the sore on his head. Anyone with such a defiling disease must wear torn clothes, let their hair be unkempt, 
cover the lower part of their face and cry out, unclean, unclean. As long as they have the disease, they remain unclean. They must live alone. They must live outside of the camp. God then goes on to talk about defiling molds in a house, etc. Same regulations for that. There is to be isolation for seven days. If this does not resolve, all of those stones are taken from the house and thrown outside of the camp. Okay, so again, someone asked me, has this been fulfilled? I, and I say, no, it has not been fulfilled. There's nowhere in scripture where Jesus addressed this and said that it was fulfilled. You can also see in Haggai, I mean, Haggai is before Jesus, but you see another aspect of why God has, uh, why he has um, established this. He talks about if consecrated food touches defiled food, does the defiled food become consecrated? No, it does not. If defiled food touches the consecrated food, does the consecrated food become defiled? Yes. So you don't get consecration by osmosis, guys, by hanging around on the channel. It's not going to happen. But you can become defiled by hanging out with those who are defiled. And this is what I have demonstrated to you today. Why was it so important for me to hang around my son-in-law? when God has made it clear that he needs to go into isolation. It was an inconvenience for me. That's what it boiled down to. An inconvenience to what I wanted. I wanted to spend time with him. I wanted for that family time to go a particular way, and I defiled myself. And it was also a stumbling block to him because I think if I had said, no, I think you need to stay at home, then it, he would have done that. Not that I'm responsible for him, but I am responsible to him and to the rest of my family. So I wanted to take responsibility for what I said. I was only deceiving myself in that situation, and I want to use this for God's glory so that his truth can be made known. Nothing has changed regarding the nature of sin, how God deals with us, the manifestations of sin. Jesus made that really clear when he was here. He did not say that he came to do away with sin and to just heal us and to do away with illness and everything else. I mean, that 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 is a, a lie in counterfeit Christianity. The only way that you're going to receive what Jesus has done is if you live out your covenant. And with regard to illness, people are still getting ill. Hello? Jesus explained to us the condition that we are in. What he said is that when a spirit goes out of a person, when a spirit is cast out of a person, when it goes out of a person, it goes through arid places looking for rest, and doesn't find it. A spirit's not going to just walk out of you, okay? It's got to be cast out of you. If it has rights to you, it's not giving up its rights. You've been handed over to that spirit. So when a spirit goes out of a person, it goes through arid places looking for rest and doesn't find it. It comes back to the house, finds it swept clean and unoccupied. It's unoccupied because that person has not returned to God. And it brings with it seven more spirits, more wicked than itself, and the final condition of that person is worse than it was in the beginning. So it will be with this wicked generation. That's what Jesus said. He did not say, so I'm going to give you medicine, doctors, and diagnostic manuals so that you can spurn what I have established in the word in order for you to understand that you have defiled yourself. That isn't what he said. Everything still stands. Nothing has been abolished there are certain things that have been fulfilled, but even in that fulfillment, we are supposed to understand the things that God established. He was not wasting his time, and he's not an idiot. Please discern this message with God.